Yo, what's good? We are back. Yours truly, one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, a.k.a. Triple P, a.k.a. the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much, much more. Today, I'm going to react to a woke NBC reporter claims voter ID laws are transphobic and dangerous for transgender people. Before we do that, though, let's give you a word from one of our sponsors. When I go out for a good time, my favorite choice to drink is Dizzle. The question is, do you Dizzle? That's right. The question is, do you Dizzle? And you can too. If you're 21 and over, go to DizzleBrand.com. You can order your very own bottle or bottles of Dizzle Premium Luxury Liqueur. Dizzle is a, a premium luxury liqueur mixed with agave tequila, French cognac, and orange liquor mango mix. Just throw your Dizzle on ice, and it's nice. Just go to DizzleBrand.com, click on our locations, click on one of the top three website links, and I recommend Emilio's Beverage. And as I said, must be 21 and over. Shipping and handling is included. And if you're in California, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Arkansas, scroll below that. There's locations. Also, go to DizzleBrand.com, click on the Dizzle Brand store, and you can get the merch. They got the hats. Got the T-shirts. And as you see, Dizzle was established. The drink itself was established in 2001. And it's been bottled for about a little over a year now. So check them out. Dizzlebrand.com. Do you Dizzle? Yes, I Dizzle. Um, we're going to get into Greg Foreman, Black Conservative Perspective. Cat that really, after listening to him and agreeing with a lot what he says, um, I definitely just realized I got a lot of conservative views, and he's based out of North Carolina, Charlotte. I'm based out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. So he's one of my North Carolinian brethren, and we'll see what he has to say about this. Talk about the mainstream liberal media. Once again, reminding us of why they're just simply not a credible or serious source of information okay because they will peddle any conspiracy theory from the democrat party while also lecturing us on the dangers of conspiracies on the dangers of coming up with conclusions that are not backed by real facts and evidence however that is not going to stop nbc from peddling this new narrative coming from the far left about voter id laws Guys, remember before, vote ID is supposed to be racist, okay? Because according to the left, black people are too dumb to be able to figure out how to get IDs or do anything, really. I mean, Joe Biden basically said that black people are too dumb to use a computer. And let me stop right there. The people that imply that, that say voter ID are racist, and then they imply that um, black people or people of color, Latin people are not educated enough or smart enough to get an id those are the real racist just implying that that's racist you know what i'm saying because all my all my black friends are super duper smart well-educated brothers and this idea that none of them could get an id is some horse shit it's bogus as fuck it's bullshit you know so let's keep it moving To use a computer okay um or to figure out how to go and get vaccinated but yeah um vote id laws are racist and and now apparently uh according to nbc uh vote id laws may also be transphobic as well take a look of course good to see you and as gen z gears up to hit the polls transgender voters are concerned they might be blocked from casting their ballots yeah that's because a growing number of states are enforcing stricter voter identification laws that disproportionately impact the community nbc out reporter joe yurkaba joins us now with more on this joe good morning to you so first of all how can voter id laws create obstacles for transgender people and where do we see some of the strictest voter id laws 
Sure, yeah. So voter ID laws disproportionately impact trans people because trans people are more likely to have IDs without the name uh, that they go by and the gender marker that reflects how they present. And recent research shows that just over 200,000 eligible trans voters in uh, 31 states that both conduct their elections mostly in person and require or request ID at the polls don't have IDs that reflect their gender identities and the names they go by. Um, and, you know, the, the states that have the strictest voter ID laws are mostly concentrated in the South and Midwest. So you're, you know, Tennessee, Wisconsin, Kansas. So voters there are going to be most affected. Let's talk about the process of changing identification for transgender people. I know it can be difficult. E even voter laws aside, walk us through that. It's not difficult to change. Yeah, so bear name. with me here because it's a list. I spoke to um, Alex Corona in That's Milwaukee, bullshit. a trans woman it's who had to complete this process when she name. was in college. And she told me that in Milwaukee County, first you have to go before a judge to file a, a name change petition. Then you have to publish notice of your name change in a local paper, paper for three weeks. And anyone can challenge your name change during that time. Then you go before judge again and then you have to go update your name with various state and federal agencies like the dmv and the social security office and in some counties and other states you also have to get your fingerprints taken at a local police department and also undergo a criminal background check and this has become even more difficult in recent years because a lot of states let me let me pump the brakes right there of course people would check to make sure you're not a criminal changing you know you do know a lot of criminals change their name, their identity, <coughs> um, they get fake IDs, things of that nature. Oh, this idea that nobody will check to see if somebody is not a hardened criminal changing their name. Oh, come on, man. Like, that's... Oh, my gosh. Also undergo a criminal background check. And this has become even more difficult in recent years because a lot of states have passed laws restricting whether or even how you can change your gender marker on your driver's license, um, for instance, um, which is only possible in Tennessee, for example, if you show proof of surgery. And Jill, being transgender while actually voting can be dangerous, especially in states where the so-called culture wars are raging. I know you spoke with someone about their experience at the ballot box. What did they tell you? And does that experience seem reflector of the fear that transgender people in general experience while voting? Sure, yeah. I spoke to Henry Seaton, who voted for the first time in 2016 when he turned 18, and he told me that he went to his local polling place, which was a in a conservative um, Nashville suburb, and he showed his ID to the poll worker, and at the time, he had legally changed his name, he was presenting as masculine, but his ID still said female because of those barriers I talked about to change your gender marker on IDs in Tennessee. So the poll worker was very confused and had to call over another poll worker, and it took a lot of time, and he had to out himself as trans. And he ended up being able to, to go in and vote. But he said a lot of people around him were looking at him suspiciously because they saw that he had been flagged by the poll workers. And he said that that's it's incredibly dangerous for trans people due both to the wave of anti-trans legislation, legislation that we've seen, but also um, in states like Tennessee, where you've seen five anti-trans bills become law last year. Um, and so those combination of the two make that kind of thing at the polls very dangerous for trans voters. Important issue. Joe, your Kaba, as always, thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. It never ceases first. to amaze me how the mainstream liberal media can manage to push such hot garbage on their viewers and retain any credibility whatsoever, right? It's probably the reason why they don't have any credibility. It is running with silly stories and narratives like this, okay, which they want you to believe. They want you to believe that voter ID laws are racist, first and foremost, even though there is no evidence to back up that claim, right? We have record voter turnout in all these states that they claim are suppressing, suppressing. or taking yeah. away the rights of black people to vote. But never mind that, right? So we got to move on to the next narrative here, right? The next narrative is that, well, they're transphobic, right? Voter ID laws are transphobic. And the reason why voter ID laws are transphobic is because trans people had to jump through extra hoops in order to vote or to make sure they are properly registered to vote in virtue of being trans because transgender individuals change their names. They change their, uh, or they try to change <laughs> their gender, their sex exactly, on their IDs and stuff like that. 
Uh, yes, and that can. stuff doesn't necessarily match their voter registration records. So therefore, it's disproportionately impacted trans people, a.k.a. it's transphobic. Not only that, they don't stop there. They also go as far as to say that voting for trans people is a potentially dangerous activity. <laughs> because you got to remember, you're voting in the South, right? You vote in the South with all the racist bigots. They don't want you to vote anyways, right? Again, this is a narrative that is being pushed by... NBC's uh, transgender, I believe this is their transgender uh, propaganda artist, right? All right, so let me plug in. And just to give you some tech context, I live in the South and Greg Foreman lives in the South. And I agree with what he what he just said. See, this is the, the problem is just because you want to identify as something doesn't mean you can become that. People can identify as a rhinoceros, a zebra, um, whatever, a hyena, a honey badger, you know. Um, it doesn't mean you can become that just just because you identify with something. I would argue there's um, like white dudes that, that rap might feel like they identify with being black when they don't, you know. And I'm a rapper. I don't identify with being black. Um, I just love hip hop music. Um, a man will never be a, become a woman, and a woman will never become a man. You can act like one, you can feel like you're one, you can think you're one, but you'll never be one. Um, and your ID should your ID shouldn't have whatever you just want to identify. And that's the problem with these people that want to identify with things. Like the lady said, the names they identify with. Well, it ain't my responsibility to remember all your fucking names. Society, we've called people by one fucking name for since the beginning of fucking time. And all of a sudden, you know, a year or so, two years ago, everybody wants to be called by three or four names. They want to identify as um three or four thousand fucking sexes and genders um no like it there's gonna be people that are never ever going to believe that believe convert or accept um a man can become a woman and a woman can become a man when they can't it's not realistic. It's fairy tales. It's made up. That's the thing. You're trying to force everybody to convert to your fairy tale land, your made up names, your made up identities. You know, I, I identify as a honey badger. It doesn't mean I'm a fucking honey badger. And, and why do I identify as a honey badger? Because they're fearless. You know, they're fearless. So, um, but it doesn't make me a fucking honey badger. Um, and you're going to open up a rabbit's hole for people to say they can identify as anything. They can identify as a race. If they can identify as gender, they can identify as race. They can identify as an animal, a reptile, some other mammal, um, amphibian. They can say they identify whatever they want to identify. It doesn't make it reality. And that's the thing. These people are living in their own little fairy tale worlds. And they're mad because us people live in reality won't acknowledge their fairy tale world as reality when it's not. It's not. And um, yeah, like if you want to get your name changed, get your name changed. But you, you can't change your sex. And just because you want to change it on your ID doesn't mean it's reality. That's just you living in your own little world, in your own little bubble. You know, so you could feel better about yourself. And that's the problem, man. Like if if you don't feel comfortable in your own skin that you were born in, I mean, I always said there's something wrong with you anyways. You know, I'm not the most attractive person. Um, I'm short. I'm five foot five. So women definitely look past me and over me, you know. Um but I am, I'm happy and comfortable in my skin. Um, I'm happy knowing the things that I know in life, knowing, the, knowing that I'm a necessity 
to um, thousands and thousands of up and coming musicians. I'm a necessity in life. And, and that alone um, is happiness enough for me. You know, I get up every day and I get to promote music for a living. That's happiness enough for me. You know, and in my free time, I get to get on here on podcast and speak my mind and speak my feelings and, you know, hope people agree with me and like what I have to say. And even though I'm a little, not a little, I'm, I'm harsh because I don't like to sugarcoat things like everybody else. They want to sugarcoat things and, you know, try to say things so nice as possible, like the truth sometimes doesn't hurt like the truth isn't so ugly sometimes like the truth isn't pretty sometimes and i could i would argue that a lot of times the truth isn't pretty but um yeah voter ids are not racist let's think of all i mean don't let me pull up all the things needed for id uh things you need to have an id for uh 24 things that require a photo ID. And I've talked about this before. Alcohol, cigarettes, opening a bank account, applying for food stamps. What do you know? You can't apply for food stamps without a fucking ID. Apply for welfare. Um, apply for Medicaid, Social Security. Uh, these are a lot of things that poor people in the urban community are getting how the fuck are they get i mean whoa how the fuck are they getting food stamps if they don't know how to get an id like that's what's so racist to think of people don't know how to get an id so they can't get welfare and food stamps and medicaid and social social security unemployment uh wow if you want to get a fucking job guess what you got to have an id you want to rent or buy a house you got to apply for mortgage you got to have a fucking id drive by and rent a car ID. Get on an airplane. What do you know? ID. You want to get married? Guess what? You got to have a fucking ID. Purchase a gun. Hey, I purchased a fucking 12 gauge shotgun. And guess what? You got to have ID. If you want to adopt a pet, oh, you got to have an ID. Fortunately, my pet was given to me, so I didn't have to adopt it. You want to rent a hotel room? Hey, I lived in a hotel for about a year, me and my dog, um, when I got kicked out of a house. To my um, person I was renting a room from kicked me out at midnight and I had to rent a hotel room quick, like in a hurry. And we stayed in there for a year until I got hit by a freaking car. So yeah, guess what? I had to have ID, apply for a hunt license, apply for a fishing license, a fucking fishing license. You want to get a fishing license, you got to have a fucking ID. Um, you want to buy a cell phone, visit a casino, pick up a prescription, hold a rally of protest. What do you know? Guess what? If you want to hold a rally of protest, you got to have ID. Blood donations. ID. Yeah, I donated plasma for it. Guess what I had to have? An ID. And guess what? There was whites, blacks, Hispanics in there. Buy an M-rated M rated video game. Guess what you got to have? A motherfucking ID. I didn't know this one until last time I, I did uh, the reaction to this shit. Purchase nail polish at CVS. Guess what you got to have? A motherfucking ID. Purchase certain cold medicines. ID. Oh, but not to vote? Pfft. But not to vote. Every fucking other thing on the fucking planet. In adult life, you need a motherfucking ID for. And apparently, if you need one to vote, it's racist. Or it's transphobic. Or probably homophobic, too. And that's the thing. Like, homosexuals are living in reality. Because they're just people that are attracted to the same sex mentally, uh, physically, emotionally, and sexually. Um, transgender is a whole different thing. It's, you know, just because a guy is feminine doesn't mean that he's supposed to be a woman. Because that's the thing. There's masculine um, homosexuals and there's feminine. There's masculine lesbians and there's feminine lesbians. You know, so... This transgender thing is a whole different thing. It's 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 um it's it's a mental issue. It's definitely some kind of mental issue. It's um you know you're not comfortable in your own skin, and you know you want to force everybody um to convert to 
lies and reality and misinformation. Transgenders is misinformation. You're talking about misinformation? Transgenders are spewing misinformation because a man cannot become a woman and a woman cannot become a man. And that's why you'll never see a biological woman make it in men's professional sports. You'll never see that. Not in my lifetime. So once again, I'll thank you for tuning in. Paul Pickett Podcast, and I'm out.